It is a bizarre, bloody story that has all the makings of a Hollywood gangster movie, but it really happened, and most of it was set in the San Gabriel Valley. Tonight, Chris Blatchford investigates the Mexican Mafia's plot to kill Frankie B. God told North to build an ark. Frankie Buelna sits in his living room reading the story of Noah's Ark to his two-year-old daughter. God sent the animals to Noah two by two. He reads this biblical tale of sin, judgment, and salvation as if he's just another dad. But he's Frankie B., a member of the Mexican Mafia, also called Eme, who has convictions for burglary, armed robberies, drug dealing, and assault with a deadly weapon. He spent more than half his adult years in prison. That's his dad. Nine years ago, he appeared to be a loving dad here at home in Pomona. But at the time... This mafia dropout says Frankie B was in a fight for his life. You know, they just killing each other. There's nothing but power struggle. All of them are fighting for power. Frankie B, unlike most Mexican mafia members, was from Northern California. But when paroled in the early 1990s, he set up shop in the San Gabriel Valley. Pomona detectives say he once threatened to kill a guy over 20 bucks and was always dabbling where he shouldn't. Pomona is the territory of a rival Mexican Mafia boss, Big Mike Lerma. Lerma's goddaughter in 2004 wrote to him in prison. And in this letter obtained by Fox 11 News, she complained that Frankie B. keeps threatening our family. Big Mike writes back, not to worry, things have a way of working out in time. Gang specialist Leo Duarte. Frankie B. was apparently uh, uh, the information that was, you know, going around is that he was stepping on toes. According to this law enforcement intelligence report, mafiosos Sal Toro Hernandez and Daryl Dashing D. Castrojon were also upset that Frankie B. was taxing drug dealers in their Inland Empire territories. Bureau of Narcotics agent Scott Barker. Frankie B. didn't care. He was going to collect taxes when he wanted, where he wanted. He was going to do his thing because he was Frankie B. And that's not the only reason Frankie B's life was in jeopardy. In a 1994 court case, he admitted to being a member of the Mexican Mafia, violating the code of silence. He also claimed to have dropped out, an offense punishable by death. And in 2005, detectives uncovered a plot to kill Frankie B. The way this whole thing came together was, uh, was pretty surprising. It all happened by chance. Investigators had wiretapped a gang called the Pomona 12th Street Sharkies. That's because a wannabe gang member had assassinated CHP officer Thomas Steiner outside the Pomona courthouse. But suddenly, the wiretaps caught the voice of a Mexican mafia kingpin, Daryl Dashing D. Castrojon. Castrojon, he's dangerous and real quiet. He just listens, observes. Those are the ones you got to watch out for. Investigators say... Dashing D made his bones at San Quentin in the 1980s by killing a Crip gang member. The wiretap showed he would direct and control a hit on Frankie B. There was no one uh, that, uh, that worked. Dashing D gave orders to Hector Munoz, known as Tiburon, and Arturo Garcia, known as Topo. Okay, uh, be sure to stay on him. Tiburon and Topo are both shot callers in the 12th Street Sharkies gang. All right, and, uh, thank you. Under them, Julio Felix, another Sharky known as Barney, who warned about being reckless. Be careful, dog. Don't try to, you know, come across and you're trying to get it over with, you know? Yeah, Don't yeah. Try. Barney was the middleman who arranged details of the hit and supplied this murder weapon, a 38 revolver. All right, I'm going to go pick it up then, Barney. He selected Ricardo Polanco, another sharky known as Biggs, to be the trigger man. The first plot was to shoot and kill Frankie B here at his home. Well, I scoped it out. I know how to, do, how to get away and manage it. But one investigator describes Biggs as a cartoon-like character who just couldn't get it done. He lost one murder weapon and repeatedly made other excuses. I can't do it right now, Barnes. I've been drinking. post room curtain. Three, twelve packs. After nearly four months of bungling, Biggs was arrested in a rental car on his way to do the hit, just a few blocks from the home of Maria Lopez, Frankie B's girlfriend. He had a loaded 38 revolver. By that time, investigators had already been to Frankie B's house to warn him about a murder plot. So would you like protection? <laughs> 
Frankie B said no. He said he's had that before. He's not worried about it. But a source close to Frankie B tells us he was angry and paranoid. And investigators say calls intercepted later showed even Frankie's girlfriend Maria was willing to set him up. As it turns out, she was co-conspirator Hector Munoz's girlfriend too. And Munoz, four months later, was ambushed at a red light, shot 13 times and left for dead. Investigators guess it was Frankie B's work. It happens to a lot of them. These guys think it's going to last forever, but it doesn't. By 2008, Barney Felix, Topo Garcia, and Biggs Polanco were all convicted and sentenced to long prison terms for their part in the plot to kill Frankie B, even though they never got the job done. And this woman, who does not want to be identified. It was pretty messy, and it was chaos. Says... She was here at Character's Sports Bar in Pomona in November of 2007, the night Frankie Buelna was in fact shot and killed by an unknown gunman. No one is talking. People are afraid to talk. Hell yeah, because they reach out and touch people, even from behind bars. Dashing D. Castrojon jumped bail, a million dollars bail, three days before he was set for trial in the Frankie B. murder plot. He's been a fugitive now for nearly three years. Fox 11 News has learned he's been seen in Mexico and Central America and has direct ties to the major drug cartels. We've learned he's using Inland Empire gangs, Black Angels, 18th Street, West Side Verdugo and East Side Victoria to ferry large quantities of drugs and cash across the border. One cop tells us it seems that Castrojon is untouchable. And for now, it appears that he has fallen off the radar. In the Indian Empire, Chris Blatchford, Fox 11 News.